Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. This week we're talking all things shoes. What do I use for my easy days, for my tempos, for my sessions, for my long runs? What do I wear to race in? Well, we're going to cover it in this video. Let's get into it. It was a rest day yesterday, so it's a nice 40 minute easy run to start the week off this week. Um, legs are feeling surprisingly good after Sunday's hard effort at Lincoln. Um, averaging eight or eight a mile at the minute. Yeah, feeling good. As I said earlier, any easy run that's shorter than an hour, I always go for my suck and eat endorphin shift. The blue ones today. So what do I, what do I think about these shoes? For someone who needs a bit of stability in their everyday shoes, these are just perfect. They don't have a rigid post. It's how the, uh, the midsole foam is shaped. And the fact that it's quite firm helps keep that little bit of rigidity and stability. So I love them. Yes, they are firm. People have told me that one version one are better, softer, but um, these still feel poppy, responsive. It's not like it's just a slab of hard foam with no response, like the Nike React foam, let's say. Um, yeah, I love them. 600 miles in my last pair. And these are on sale on sportsshoes.com. Two pairs for 140 pounds. So hopefully it lasts me about a year. Both pairs, rotate them through. But yeah. Sock and endorphin shift too. If you need a stability trainer for your everyday, these are great. It's Wednesday, so it's workout Wednesday today. Just done my warm up in the Saucony Tempest. Gonna do some drills and strides and then get into the workout. For the workout, the old faithful Vaporfly Mark One. So the workout's on the screen now. And this is to simulate towards the end of a half marathon. So working that lactate threshold system on fatigue legs. It's gonna be a tough one, so I'm gonna put the camera down, get on with the session, and then talk to you when I've finished. Wow, the only way I can describe that workout is a mixed bag. Uh, I'm gonna try and explain how I feel felt during that workout. It's probably gonna make no sense, but hopefully you can see from this channel that I'm just being authentic as an, and as honest as possible. So when I started, First of all, I did not want to do that session. As soon as I see CV reps, I'm just like, oh, this is going to be hard. Um, but the threshold, the first threshold, could I feel it in my legs from Sunday? Yeah, I could, but aerobically I felt absolutely fine. Um, and I hit that first 12 minutes in average pace of 6.15. So feeling good. And then we went into the CV reps and going back, the first one, did it feel like threshold? Yeah, it felt like a threshold effort. So I was happy with that. Going into the CV reps, they did not feel like CV reps. My legs were hurting. Aerobically, I just couldn't go. It felt like I was running the last 200 meters of a hard 5K race. It was, it was tough, but we got it done. The first CV rep, 5.45, 5.46 and 5.43. So happy with that. And then going into the final threshold session um, rep, again, felt great. Felt like a threshold session, threshold rep, sorry. And I hit that at 6.13 pace, but the threshold effort felt good. Um, 
my legs feel a bit battered now I'm just about to go and do my cool down now um, I'm gonna leave it there because there's a big truck making loads of noise but yeah so 15 minute cool down and that's it first up we've got my easy day shoes and they are right here so the Saucony Endorphin Shift this is the second version we've got two colorways um, as you can see number one number one because my kids told me I had to wear odd shoes so these are my pair number one and then I've got a second pair at home as well so easy day trainer I need a little bit of stability um, and these rather than have a, a medial post it's the shape of the, the foam that keeps it a little bit more stable it's a very firm ride so if you like more plush cushioned midsole this is not the one for you, but if you want something poppy, responsive, relatively lightweight, um, this is a great shoe. My last pair I got 600 miles in and they were, they were fantastic. Um, hard wearing, high abrasive rubber. Uh, yeah, just a great all round shoe. Um, yeah, next we'll go on to what I wear for threshold work. So next up for the threshold work, We've got the Saucony Endorphin Speed. This is the trainer I was looking for when Nike discontinued the Pegasus Turbo 2. It's uh, amazing foam, uh, Power Run PB from Saucony, similar to Zumax from Nike. Um, it's got a, not got a carbon plate, it's got a nylon plate in it, so it's still got that, that snappiness um it's just a, a great shoe um for london for my long runs this is what i use and now i just use it for threshold threshold stuff um any of the longer reps that i'm doing in my workout sessions so next we're going to move on to what i use for 5 and 10k workouts so moving on then guys for my shorter faster workouts i use the night vapor fly i've got a couple of pairs um, these are just for workouts now. They've got 100 miles in them, so I don't really race in them. Um, but yeah, so Nike Vaporfly version one, version two. I prefer the version one. Um, it just feels um, a bit more responsive, if I'm honest. And I prefer the the Vapor Weave upper rather than um, the, I think this is the Atom Knit. Um, yeah, it's still a great shoe, the version two. I just prefer the version one. Moving on to the long run. So, the long run. My, my favorite run of the week and my favorite shoe. Saucony Tempest. This is a new shoe for me. I've put just over 100 miles in them and they are just amazing. Slightly stability. A slight stability shoe. It's light, it's got the Power Run PB foam, the same as the Saucony Endorphin Speed and the Saucony Endorphin Pro. But then it's also got the Power Run midsole as well. So it's just responsive. A little bit firmer than a normal Power Run midsole. It's got the stability, it's got lots of abrasive, high abrasive rubber, a great upper, little bit thick, that is the only downside, it is a little bit thick, so in the summer it might get a little bit sweaty, um, but all, all Saucony shoes for me uh, fit true to size, um, great lockdown, I always use a runner's knot no matter what shoes I'm wearing, um, I'm that much of a runner now that I even do it in my casual trainers because I'm just, I use running shoes every day. Um, but yeah, the, the Tempest is, I believe it's Saucony's answer to the Nike Invincible. I just think they've done a better job. Um, very, very, very good shoe. If there's one shoe I'd recommend to anyone, it's the Saucony Tempest. 
So next guys, what do I wear on the trails? Now I don't get on the trails very often. If I do, they're usually like buffed out trails and I can just wear my easy day shoe. Uh, but if I am going on the trails, there's the Nike Terakiger. Not sure what version this is. Seven, six? I don't know, I just like the colorway. Um, comfortable shoe, I've, I've probably put about 50 miles into them. Um, yeah, grippy. Comfortable, everything that you need on a trail. Um, I've not slipped over in them, so yeah, that's all I can really say because I don't really get on the trails much. Um, if you get on the trails, let us know in the comments what's a, what's a great trail shoe. Because um, this is good, but I don't think you could run that fast in them. Let me know. And now we get into the racing, the juicy stuff. So, for five and 10Ks, Nike Vaporfly version one. Um, version two, version two. Simply version two over the version one because these are newer. And they're pink and everyone likes pink, right? Pink makes you go faster. Yeah, so I've decorated these in the style of Jake Smith. Um, yeah, great shoe. I could harp on about them, but there's 7,000 trainer reviews on the Nike Vaporfly. Um, very responsive foam, ridiculously lightweight, carbon plate, full length, fast shoe, very fast shoe. And then for half marathon and above, 10 miles and above, it's something I never thought I'd say. I always thought I'd be a Nike, Nike guy for, for racing, uh, just because I, I good results with the Nike Vaporfies. But it's the Socony Endorphin Pro 3. Um, this shoe is pff, unbelievable. Um, I thought, you know what, when, when they released it and it was pink, I couldn't help myself. So I, I got a pair and I thought, if they don't work, I'll just send them back. Um, wow. I put it on and I was like, oh, this is, this is okay. It's not as comfortable as, a, as the Nike Vaporfly when you first put it on your foot. Um, and I went for a run and my first run, I thought, okay, these, these are nice. I think they're gonna be a marathon trainer. I don't think I could use them for a half marathon. They don't feel quick enough. Um, and then I had a park run and I just thought, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna give them a go. I put them on and uh, I smashed my PB by 30 seconds. <laughs> so <laughs> you can use them for all distances. Um, since then I've broke that PB again with the, the Vaporfly. Um, and the reason I went back to the Vaporfly was because I wanted to keep these for my big races. So Seville Half Marathon next year, Cambridge Half Marathon. Um, Cause at 220 pounds and 240 pounds for the Vaporfly, I can't really afford to uh, replace them all the time. <laughs> But yeah, um, if you're gonna spend over 200 pounds on a shoe, I would say it's gotta be this one. This is just, well, it, it's pretty. Okay. Uh, but yeah, a fantastic shoe. And it feels like, the Vaporfly are very aggressive. They get you on your toes and you, and you can really go. These just feel like you're clicking the miles off and you're just cruising through. They're, they're a great, great shoe. And then the last type of racing, I don't do it much in this little green bag. For the track, I have the Nike Dragonflies. Seriously, seriously lightweight. Um, this is the Tokyo Olympic colorway, audacious. I mean, gold spikes. And a pink outsole, what's not to love. Um, yeah, like I say, I've run on a track a handful of, literally a handful of times. Um, I've done two 5Ks in them. And I was always told, oh, you're new to running and you're especially new to track running. I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear spikes. You, oh, especially not for a 5K, your calves will be on fire. But with the Zoom X foam and these, honestly, it felt like I was just wearing a pair of Vaporflies 
with a bit more grip because of the spike. Um, just, yeah, great shoe. Um, I'd love to say I can recommend them, but I don't think I'm in a place to recommend track shoes because I'm not a track runner as such. But um, for the times I've been on the track, these have been great. And if they're good enough for Ingebrigtsen, and they're good enough for me. So there we have it guys, that is my shoe rotation. Um, yes, I do have a lot of shoes. Yes, I'm addicted to running and running shoes. But um, do you need all these shoes? Absolutely not. Can you be a runner with one pair of shoes? Absolutely. The reason I have lots of shoes, um, I run a lot, relatively. Obviously I don't run as much as an elite runner. Um, but I've always um, been told that you should rotate your shoes, allow the midsole to um, decompress, and it'll, one, keep injuries further at bay, and two, your shoes will last longer. So that's my excuse. Uh, but yeah, great, great shoes. Um, it's taken me a while to find what I like. I've been running just over three years. Started with a ne uh, Nike Pegasus as my everyday shoe. Kept on getting injured. Not injured, just niggles in and around my shins, ankles, and then I realized, look, just get some stability shoes. Swallow your pride, get some stability shoes. And I haven't looked back since. Not been injured in Over, yeah, over a year now, October last year, after London, that's when I got, that's when I was last injured with an Achilles. Um, and this year I've just gone from strength to strength, loving my running, loving my shoes. I've ditched Nike mostly for Saucony, but yeah. Um, let me know what your favorite shoes are. Um, and that's it, that's the end of the vlog. Um, what I was going to say, next week we've got some big, big workout. Um, I think it's six minutes, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, one minute. And then back up to six minutes at 5k pace, which is going to be tasty. Uh, look forward to that one. And in two days time, we have got Phil Sessman on the channel. Uh, we did a question and answer interview with Phil. Amazing guy, some knowledge bombs in there. Uh, just a really nice guy and the first elite athlete to the channel. Next up, we've got Jake Smith. We've also got Adam Fogg, the Fog Dog. And we're also Andy Rayner, the Fod Runner, um, will be making an appearance. So got some great guests coming up. If you've got any questions for Jake Smith next week, pop the uh, questions in the comments below and I'll make sure that he sees them and answers them. But yeah. Back yourself and enjoy the run.